Woo! Chili in this mob. Okay. Larry Nance is back. And a lot of people that follow me back in the days know how I feel about Larry Nance and Jordan Clarkson. Um, I always said that Larry Nance and Jordan Clarkson were like my favorite two players on the Lakers. Favorite just meaning that I just like them because I like their their character. You know, I like the idea that they are two role players that know their role and understand and don't really have that much of an ego, but just do whatever the coach asked them to do. Both of these guys are second rounders who came in and actually benefited towards the Lakers and they helped the Lakers, you know, become, I mean, not saying to make the Lakers a better team, but they just played good parts, you know, for the Lakers. Now, that doesn't mean that if they decide to depart ways with these two guys to make trades or bring in possible better players, I have no problem with that. But Right now, I'm having a problem with Lou Walton. And first and foremost, I know you're going to a lot of fans out there that probably would say, well, you know, if y'all think that Kuzma not going to come in off the bench, you know, he, he's going to score, he's not going to do this and that, you're a fool, this and that. Now, here's the problem a lot of y'all fail to realize. Larry Nance is going to start. We already know this. This is Luke Walton. And I'm starting to really kind of like fall away from Luke. Only because I'm starting to think he just don't know what he's doing. Because remember I said in a couple of videos ago that, you know, Luke came out and said that we don't have a superstar. Now, with that being said, the reason why we don't have a Luke superstar is because Luke Walton hasn't given certain individuals the green light. Like, for instance, when Kuzma score, Luke Walton, he tells the media he has no problem with him scoring, but he wanted to do other things, which is nothing wrong with it. But when we need them points, Kuzma is your best man on the floor that can give you a quick 20-25. The biggest problem is that, you know, they go away from him, you know, because it's team ball and I understand that. Brandon Ingram is, is held much higher on a higher scale than Kuzma, and I still don't understand why. Brandon Ingram take less shots. He's a good defensive player, but he takes less of shots. Um, he's inconsistent. I think Kuzma, like I said, Kuzma, um, Julius Randle, and Jordan Clarkson probably are our most consistent players on that team. And at this point in time, you got to put the best weapons out there. Now, you got Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench with Julius Randle because now that you got Larry Nance, Kuzma, and, and Ju Julius Randle, you're going to be having three guys fighting over a power forward position spot. Julius Randle will be playing some center. Larry Nance probably plays some center as well, you know, to mix it up. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, Lou Walton really don't know what he's doing. I I'm just going to say it like that. I know a lot of y'all might disagree with me, but I said this a long time ago. I've been said that we should have got Mark Jackson. Now, I'm not saying get rid of Luke Walton. But I'm just saying, at that time, when those young players, before they hired Luke Walton, before it was even acknowledged that Luke Walton was going to be that, you know, that coach, I said in one of my videos that they should go after Mark Jackson. And matter of fact, I said in Mike from Lakers Talk comment session, and I think I said in, um, I think it was Eddie Starr, might have been Eddie Starr or Kareem, I forgot who it was. But I said that, you know, the Lakers should have went after Mark Jackson. This is what Luke Walton was even thrown in the picture. I, so the only reason why I say because he seemed like a good coach that's actually that helped young players develop only based on what he did for Golden State then they let him go based on whatever behind the door reasons there were now the thing is that people fail to realize the reason why Kuzma needs to start and I'm telling y'all he needs to start at the three I'm not saying he needs to start the power four because it's even going to be Larry Nance or Julius Randle that should be starting the power four spot me personally I think that Julius Randle should start the power four spot because if you're looking to trade Julius Randle you got to build up his value and the only way you can build his value is to give him minutes. He's only getting like less than 20 minutes. He hasn't played 25 minutes, stuff like that. And anybody that want to debate me on that about his, his skill set and all that, you got to understand, the guy, have, he have an average over 35 minutes. If he getting 35 minutes, you know what I mean, as an average starter or something like that, then we can have a we have a, a casual debate. But in that, there's really no debate when you don't get that much minute or touches. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I say Kuzma need to start, because you don't have no firepower on that, 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 front, that first unit. And this is going to really hurt Lonzo Ball. Because that means Lonzo Ball is going to have to play with that second unit in order to get his assists, um, or to get a lot of things going. Because if you look at the starting five, all of them, if you take Kuzma out of the equation, you have no consistent players. And people fail to realize that. We're going right back to season, the first season with Luke Wallen, where the second unit is going to be better than the first unit. Why do we want to keep having that? That's the reason why we're never going to get to that level of being, uh, we're not going to make the playoff. If we continue to, to live in stubbornness and to accept the things that he's constantly making bad moves and bad judgment on, we're not going to get to the next level. And what's going to happen is at the end of the season, they might just, he might, they ain't going to fire him. But at the end of the season, he might just say Luke Walton steps down as head coach. They're going to probably make him lightly resign. And, and that's the sad part, man, because I like Luke. Don't get me wrong, I like Luke. He's real passionate. He loves the players. But he does have a problem with, like, you know, like I said before, calling out players and then allow, and being biased to other players. You know, some players he don't call out, you don't hear nothing about them. He only speak highly of them. 
But then he'll talk about other players that should have did this and should have did that, which I still think is unfair and that's detrimental to the team because it can hurt the chemistry or the balance of what we have as a team when they go in the locker room and stuff like that. Especially like if you know one person being picked on and you're not being picked on, you're held higher than another individual. And the other individual that's that's being um being bashed or 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 or, or expressed according to media when he's out there upon the podium and he's talking and all that, that person might feel some type of way. Now, I've been said that Brandon Ingram should play the two. The only reason why, because Brandon Ingram is their top priority. He's, imagine John said at the beginning of the season, Brandon Ingram Brandon is not going to be touched. So if Brandon is not going to be touched, nine times out of ten, he, you know, he's going to start, which is, you know, it is what it is. I mean, but I think Kuzma should play the three. You don't, Lonzo Ball ain't got nobody now. Brooke Lopez, inconsistent. Larry Nance is not a shooter. I mean, he's not a scorer. Let's be honest. I mean, he's a good, he's a good physical player. I like his, his, um, I call him the utility man because I like what he brings to the team and defense and stuff like that. You know, his high energy around the rim. Now, KCP, another inconsistent player. Yeah, he had like two or three games throughout the season that was solid, but he's inconsistent as a scorer. Um, he need to focus more on defense, and I'm not going to keep beating him up. And then you got Brandon Ingram, who just uh, is unselfish. He doesn't take many shots. You know, he can average 25 if he wants to, but he doesn't take that many shots. Kuzma is the only person that's really aggressive that actually finished well around the rim. And if you say, well, he's coming into the second unit, he still will get his minutes. To a degree. That only depends on how Luke Walton runs the system. Luke Walton, like I tell people over and over again, Luke Walton, you know what I mean? <sighs> Listen, nine times out of ten, those starting five are going to get, you know, they're going to get, you know, um, quality minutes. Now, Larry Nance probably get 18, 20 minutes because they're going to find a way to get Kuzma going because at the end of the day, you got to utilize them. If you don't utilize them, yeah, your, your job will be on the line because it's foolish. And then you're going to stop a man probably from getting this uh, opportunity to win rookie of the year on us because it ain't Lonzo Ball going to win it. You know, Kuzma is probably right there in the top running the top three. And if the Lakers win some games and play solid, he could actually be the, the, the first runner because Ben Simmons shouldn't really be in, in the run anyway. But it is what it is. You know, that's how the NBA roll. <clears throat> but I look at it like this, man. And I said over and over again, Kuzma need to start. There's no reason for him not to start. It's stupid. He should be at the three spot. Um, um, Lou Walton really should, you know, test him to see how he runs at the three spot and see and see what happens. You know, they, they, you're not hurting the team if you run him at the three. He has not run him at the three yet. He always at power for it. And you can run him at the three, man, because I think that he's versatile like that. And Luke Walton, I, I don't know, man. I, th I think that he's stubborn to a degree where you actually are hurting the development of the players. You're not really helping them. You're hurting them. And that's how I look at it because, like I say, if you look at the starting five, Lonzo Ball ain't got really nobody that's consistent to go to. And Kuzma, and how many times you heard in the video where Lonzo Ball loved playing with Kuzma? They became good friends. Because Kuzma, if you ever come down, if you ever notice when Lonzo Ball come down, 70% of the pass that he made is to Kuzma. Kuzma and KCP, only because KCP is trailing him to the side and he'll kick it out to him. But Kuzma is the main person he go to. You know why? Because he knows that if you give it to Kuzma, there's a guarantee an opportunity for him to get an assist. So, you're saying KCP playing a lot of minutes. So that means Lonzo Ball is going to have to play some of that, you know, um, minutes on the second unit. Because it's going to hurt him, man. It's going to be the same way that it hurt D'Angelo. You know, D'Angelo only had Nick Young on that starting five that he can count on. But once they started teaming them two up, you know, that's when things went downhill to like the last five, six games towards the end of the season. But, you know, <clears throat> at the end of the time, that's when Magic told Luke Walton to, to start paying him more minutes. Other than that, he wasn't playing a lot of minutes. They only playing like 25 minutes for starters. So now you're going to have, you know, they're going to have to go to Brooke Lopez, who's going to be the main target on that first unit. Um, KCP is going to become more of a shooter, less of a defender. Because that's what's taking place. A lot of people ain't paying attention to that. He's become more of a scorer, which is not his game. Taking more shots than Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, and Brandon Ingram to the point where, because he's trying to live up to the hype that he could average 20 points. He's, you know, he's becoming ISO. You know what I mean? Like, he get the ball, he holds the ball too long, and he's going to the basket, which ain't nothing wrong with it. But he's not hitting free throws. You know, going to the basket, got hit free throws, young man. He's not doing that. So you're not going to really have no, you're not going to have no, Consistent score on that starting unit again. Second unit gonna be always better than the first unit. Lou Walton, I'm at the point in time I'm really starting to judge his coaching. You know, I'm starting to you know look at his coaching uh, abilities. You know, because right now I'm not seeing nothing uh, positive from this. Like, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with who's coming off the bench. Yeah, it's not. But you fail to realize your starting unit supposed to be better than your second unit. What the hell are we doing here? This ain't NBA 2K. You know what I mean? And the people fail to realize that. Everybody that, that's in agreement with that, a Kuzma coming off the bench is stupid. I, I'm not going to call you stupid, sorry. 
It's foolish. And why I say foolish is because, like I said, you don't have nobody that's consistent at starting five. The starting five is going to average less points than the freaking start um, than, the, than the bench. The bench is going to be the team that always come in and, and lift this group up. It should never be like that. Lonzo Ball is going to go deep and deep into the abyss because at the end of the day, he don't have nobody. And you're going to see how it is him struggling to get, you know, to get, um, you know, to get stats on the board. You're going to see it. It's going to be hard for him because once they play a team that got a good center, Brook Lopez fades out. They play a team that got good defenders. KCP going to fade out. Larry Nance is not even there. He can't even really, you know, he'll probably give you 10 to 12, you know I mean, 10 to 10 or whatever, but Larry Nance is not a consistent scorer. So it, it, it just don't make any sense to me. You know, like, and then the thing is, it's not going to hurt Kuzma starting at that three and Brandon Ingram either coming off the bench or playing the two. It's not going to hurt. You got to put your best player in. And I don't understand how can you continue to have your best players coming off the bench. I just don't get it, man. Julius Randle is probably the most dominant player we got at the power forward spot for a low post game and a, a gritty type of player, and you got him coming off the bench. Unless you got somebody better than him at power forward, then that's understandable. Other than that, you don't. Um, Jordan Clark is probably the best bench player, you know what I mean? And that should be the first man coming off the bench for instant offense. You know, I mean, I can tell you, it, I can coach this team, man. I don't know. I don't want to drag this thing out. It's kind of upsetting to me that Kuzma is not starting. You know, and, and everybody say, well, you know, he's still going to get his minutes and that. It's going to be very hard to do that because it's dependent on the matchup and Luke Walton's stubbornness. And that's what fans fail, fail to realize. You know, Luke Walton's stubbornness is actually is, is stopping the process of a lot of these players' development. Kuzma easily averaged 18, 20 points. I'll be honest with you. Kuzma should be the first one to get the green light because Kuzma the, the best hands in the day on the team. Not Brand Ingram. You know, we need to get off that hype train. That, that hype train was last year. Kuzma come right in instant offense. You know what I mean? This guy's come in already NBA prepared, ready to go. And you can't slow down his, his ability, man. You can't sit there and say, okay, well, I'm going to bring him off the bench. Kuzma, you know, he might say it under, under, at the press or to other people that he don't mind, but deep down inside, that hurts. You know what I mean? You come in, you leading, you know, you leading the, the team in scoring, and you're coming off the bench. What kind of bull crap is that? And I bet you, I'm going to tell you right now, if y'all, just for now on, when we play um, on, if y'all got, uh, I don't know if y'all got NBA uh, lead pass, but if you do and you're watching the game, Listen and pay attention to Mark Jackson, you know, because sometimes he always criticized Luke Walton's uh, ability to coach, but he don't say it like he don't say it like directly said indirectly. You got to pay attention to it, you know, like he was talking about Brooke Lopez, you know, um, bringing them in when they matched up against um, who, who were they to play? Uh, who was that they recently played? Um, God dang it, I forgot who it was, but he was talking about how you should, should have Brooke Lopez in, and they had Julius Randle, and Julius Randle was getting uh, tore up. Um, I forgot who it was. But anyway, it's your man, Irma Lover. Like, share, and subscribe. Get in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Um, like I said, Kuzma should be starting. Larry Nash should be at the, if anything, Larry Nash should be at the power forward. But Kuzma should be starting at the three. Not saying that you know you remove him and put him at the power forward because I don't like Kuzma at the power forward spot because it takes away his um, his arsenal when he's playing power forward. When he plays small forward, he can oh, roam around much said, more. Just, you know, well, it's your man, Irma Lover. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, that's not really fun of Luke's decision. Um, like I said, I'm trying to give him the benefit of doubt. Trying to work with him, you know, but I'm, I'm starting to like lose. Uh, just I don't know. Just just basically trying. I'm basically I'm starting to lose. Um, not respect because he didn't done anything wrong, but I'm just starting to think that he's just not the coach for the team. And I don't want to keep saying that, man. But at the end of the day, like I said before, you know, we holler we ain't got no superstar. But how can you have a superstar when you are actually neglecting players, the opportunity to be better players when you see talent you got to utilize that talent you can't keep sleeping on that talent and and start to do things byron scott did to the team uh when he was coaching and that's and that's what people fail to realize i told you over and over again lou walton to me is like the uh, caucasian version of byron scott you know until magic johnson came because he was doing exactly what byron scott was doing talking about d'angelo russell giving the guys 25 minutes being passive letting them do whatever though you know different between him and byron scott byron scott would bench him I mean, he would bench certain players, but some players he wouldn't bench. But I'm, this video is being dragged out. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. It's your man, Ever Lover. You know what it's about. Lakers till we die. Hoping that the Lakers, you know, turn this thing around. Tired of seeing four or five years of just uh, pure, uh, I could say trash, but just pure, um, you know, bad results from our players. You know, and from the front office to coaching. And I hope Magic Johnson and Palinka, you know, turn this around. Make some good moves of this offseason and not no stupid moves that's going to wind up being detrimental to the team. Take care. Have a blessed one.